Yeah. Uh, so. Great. Go ahead, please. There are these eight criteria of the O1 visa. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, you can check in the USICF website. Uh, but they generally follow this kind of pattern. Um, mm -hmm. Few things, I would mention few things like award, uh, critical, you have to own an award in the field and it's uh, subjective which award is important uh, because you, you come from different backgrounds. Right. So I don't have an expert opinion on which award is important, but I would say if you work in a different country and if you feel in the perspective of that country, that award is tough to get, that is an important award. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it depends on which background you are and how it has been framed by the attorney. Uh, so critical employment is a big one. Uh, so you, if you show like you were in a senior scientist role, or your work is important for company's growth, especially in the early stage startup scenario. That is a very direct uh, correlation with the critical employment. Right. Press, uh, it has to have some kind of press release. And there has been a different debates about which press, press we should use. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, if you studied in a university and university has a newsletter, that is a press. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, it, it also depends on, again, country specific, very country specific, and you can do multinational newspaper. If you, there is a press in that, that's a big um, achievement. So like uh, if you, go to like Quanta Magazine, Forbes, those things, they are really big and you should definitely try to include them. Uh, judging, judging, uh, I think according to the scientific field, uh, with the field I am in, peer review is considered as a judging of other mm -hmm. people's work. Mm -hmm. uh, one can also add stuff like if you're in computer science background, you can try to uh, judge a uh, hackathon and other kind of activities that will cons also consider judging. But I think uh, this is also subjective based on which uh, field you are in. Uh, membership, uh, it's very straightforward. You can get like a membership of American Chemical Society, for example, IEEE, these all things will count in. High salary is the big thing. Uh, and the way it counts uh, is that every state has their salary range uh, for a particular job. And if your salary is above that range for that particular state, that's a high salary. So if that scenario exists, then you can say that you have a high salary for that. And it's, uh, you can check the <clears throat> wage of uh, different labors, uh, from, like a labor certificate uh, from different US states. Scholarly articles, uh, I think that's very straightforward. Peer review articles, uh, journal articles, they, they count uh, towards that. Original contribution, uh, contribution. I think there, I learned something there that patents often are good, but it's not necessary. For example, if you can show that you did something important, which has been used by many and has some impact in an emerging field, uh, that is a unique contribution in the field. Uh, for example, you wrote a paper uh, which does not have a patent uh, but the number of citations is, we call it the hockey graph. That means that you published paper in January and within February, you get significant amount of citations on that. Or within that year, you have a significant citation. That means, or significant social media reach. That means the, the, there is a, uh, enough momentum on this uh, work for a particular field. So that can also contribute a lot towards saying that your work is original contribution in the field, which is uh, driving a, which is making an impact. So out of all these eight criteria, uh, I was, I can only fill up five criteria. Uh, you need to fill up three out of eight, basically. Uh, and these are my uh, five criteria. Uh, so they are pretty straightforward, scholarly articles, uh, original contributions, judge of, other people's work, uh, employment at a, a, a critical capacity employment and high salary. And it def it's not meant, like it's not necessary to have five criteria, five out of eight. If you can fill up three out of eight criteria, that's more than enough. So I think that's something uh, to keep in mind. 
so I, <clears throat> after getting the visa things approved, uh, I booked my, I came back to India to get a stamping. I did my stamping at US consulate in Calcutta. Uh, in the beginning, I applied for a regular appointment, but the company wanted me to join within a month. So I got a letter from them. I requested an expedited appointment and it was approved. Uh, so then I went for a stamping on September, 2022. Uh, I think that's the typical timeline which I had. <clears throat> Then I joined in October uh, of that same year. Uh, but startup life is difficult. Startup often goes south. Uh, so our startup, the first one, it ran out of money. Uh, I finished my contract December uh, 2022. And I managed to get a uh, severance window between December 2022 and April 24, because you, I mean, there are options that you can only get two weeks after your after you end your employment. I said like I want four months, and you just divide the two weeks uh, money between these four months. So I didn't get extra money. I just spread it across because it will help me to keep my status. And because if I completely out. Imagine the scenario, if I finished my appointment in December 22, I had 60 days to leave the country. But I was officially within the severance package till April. So then I have April, May, June to leave the country. So if you have this kind of scenario, you can always negotiate uh, and chunk your amount of money you get for a longer period of time so that you can still officially employ it uh, but you can, uh, that will help with your uh, job search and everything else. Uh, I think happy to take questions if someone has any in this case. Hey, Argo, can I ask a yep. question here? Yeah, sure. Uh, when you ask your company to extend your two weeks of, you know, that pay up to four months, um, what about the benefits and how did you handle your health insurance and other kind of other, other kind of stuff? Yeah, the health insurance was uh, there till uh, till my end of my uh, end of my Till April 24, basically. So that was till the end of two weeks? Sorry? That was did that... not, health insurance was, in my case, it did not end after two weeks. So the company kept paying for you, for, you, for my health insurance. Your, okay. That's really yeah. good to know. Not many companies would sponsor for that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think uh, it was December 23. I'm sorry if I uh, I made a mistake of December 2022. Okay, so what happened to the next startup? Uh, so I had a time to uh, apply and look for jobs. Uh, so I started uh, looking for jobs in January 24. I had some initial conversation, presentation, and, and interviews with a different company. Uh, then I got an offer letter in March 24 and my new employer wanted to sponsor my own visa uh, and I got the own visa <clears throat> in March 24 uh, so it took and it was much faster process compared to the previous one because most of the things were kind of repurposed I did not use multiple new recommendation letters all the other things were kind of as it is uh, some slight modification uh, and updating of the profile. That was very easy. Uh, uh, I thought after uh, the new company, I went to the company with the expectation that they are, they're gonna be, uh, they are they are kind of doing some great work. Uh, but when I joined the company, I realized that's not the truth. And uh, they don't have enough infrastructure to do what they said they will do and the company culture was really not a big fit. So in 
uh, May 24, after a few months of just joining, I left the company uh, and I contacted the incubator, which was based in uh, West Coast, uh, about some help on how to start a company because I knew no, I don't know how to do it, basically. They uh, hooked me up with a law firm uh, for company incorporation, uh, and they usually do the company incorporation for free. <laughs> for free. So they did my company incorporation in June 24. Uh, on the same month, I opened up my business bank account uh, and I got the connection from the same incubator. And the company was incorporated in June. Uh, I contacted an immigration law firm who uh, it's also based in West Coast who are specialized in uh, immigration advices for someone who is starting a company. And uh, they helped me with the, with filing the new O-1 visa. Most of the document we repurposed from the previous O-1 visas, uh, but the additional stuff was uh, like the pitch for my company. And in July 24, uh, the visa was approved. Uh, and in my company, I don't have any uh, external funding so far. Uh, so I have a co-founder who is an American citizen. He basically, I mean, because O1 is the employer-based visa, so you need someone to give you a job. So basically, my co-founder gave me the job within the company, and that's how that's officially the uh, O1. You officially need that to uh, submit the O1 visa. And everything else was pretty smooth. Uh, so if you have any questions here within this timeline, I'm happy to take the questions now. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, hello. Hey, uh, Simon, that's a, that's a great journey so far. Uh, very nice to hear it. So, with regard to this company incorporation, I mean, you don't have to tell too many details about the actual, what you're doing, but are you an experimental company now? Are you doing computational with your work? And no, we, are, the, we are computational. Yeah. Computational, so, and do you have employees for you now, or you are the only employee? No, we don't have an employee, we, I'm oh, the okay, only one. Okay, okay, yeah. got it, okay. And um, when you establish this, uh, I mean, incorporation and then, your business bank account, do you need to show mm -hmm. that you're paying yourself or it's not required at this moment? Yes, you need to show you are paying yourself. You need to have your own salary, uh, yeah. Okay, so because you don't have external investors right now, right, is that what you said? Yes, I don't have, so I, I all my savings account, I'm, I'm paying from, from my own savings Got account, it. but most of my okay. savings account money is now in a business bank account. Okay, very good, thank you. Anyone else has any questions? No? Uh, uh, yeah, if, if I can ask. Uh, so yeah. thank you for like uh, walking us through this excellent uh, journey and how you navigated all these different obstacles uh, because a lot of times people don't uh, have the clear understanding uh, and at the last minute when someone faces these kind of issues, uh, we are more focused on finding something new rather than renegotiating the terms of like uh, separation. Um, thanks for walking through that. So uh, can, you, uh, can you tell a little bit more about uh, how you approached your previous company for this repurposing of your severance timeline and what, uh, what, um, uh, are there any additional things apart from time and insurance one can one can think about asking and discussing, finding out? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Uh, so I, I, well, I must say the thing. Uh, I did a lot of work for the company. So basically, uh, it's probably arrogant to say, but without my work, that would have been the comp They would have been out of money before. So mm -hmm. I had a leverage on them to start with, I had okay. some upper hand. Mm -hmm. and it, so that helped. Mm -hmm. I, If I look back, I should have asked for more money. 
and that time is gone. So I said like, I, there is only two, I mean, there could be two options. You can ask for more money or you can ask for longer time, like the one I did. I felt like the longer time will help me because I wanted to stay and look for jobs within the US without like thinking of getting out within two months. And as they're already paying for the health insurance during that time, and I was relatively healthy and uh, I felt like this seems like a good deal. But if I look back, um, I mean, if you feel like your work is of huge impact, uh, which can be patented by company once you leave, you can always ask for, you can always negotiate the severance pay. But it was too late for me. I already did the, uh, but if I have to go back and do it again, I think uh, a sig significantly higher severance pay mm -hmm. uh, would be a, definitely a negotiation, a negotiation uh, I should keep okay. or like uh, maybe uh, still keeping the stock within the company once mm -hmm. you leave because if you leave the company they usually don't vest your stock mm -hmm. but I could have asked for to keep my stock alive even if I left right. Right. so there are different ways to negotiate I'm mm -hmm. not sure exactly how it fits in different company but like you can negotiate on the stock you can negotiate on the time you can negotiate on the of course the money itself uh, so I think, and you can also ask for a, like, if you think your work will be patented, eventually, if you leave, you can make sure that does not happen. Uh, you should also bring your own lawyer to the game, Okay. which I realized much later when I left. If you ask me now, I would, do, I would have done that. Right. Uh, so you can also, and they will help you to uh, um, make a deal. Mm. Nice. Any other questions? Any, uh, let's see. There's in chat. Yes. Uh, uh, can I ask one question? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. John. Yeah. I think this is the most important slide for all of us who are attending uh, this seminar because this is the point where you are explaining the process which you went through. Because earlier you mentioned that you get only 60 days after your termination from company to mm -hmm. leave the yeah. US. And what you are mentioning here that uh, uh, you left the company in May and you got your open approved in July. So it was neck to neck yeah. time. Like, I think, I, I don't yeah. know uh, how tough time you face <laughs> in that duration, but uh, I can't imagine yeah. that what you felt during that time. Yeah. So the one thing that helped me a lot when uh, I got like this four months window from my first company, right? And during mm -hmm. that time, I did, a, I, I had the idea of starting to comp make a company, make a case for the company, make a business document. Mm -hmm. So in February, I already had the business document. Okay. And I always kept working on that during the weekends when I was not working. Uh, so I I had more or less something which you can say like a PowerPoint, which I can go mm -hmm. to the investor basically ready mm -hmm. by before the May. Mm -hmm. uh, so that helped me a lot to like not write everything from scratch. I mean, because mm -hmm. I just modified a few things. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, that, that, uh, that definitely helped. Yeah, so can you please elaborate on this entire process of company formulation, uh, formation, like what it takes uh, on your part uh, when you are deciding to uh, establish a company or start a company? Like you are saying that uh, business uh, idea, then uh, proposing it. So what what it takes? What are the steps in that process, and how much time it takes in the entire process? Yeah. So I think uh, first thing you need to show your team. Uh, uh, first thing you need to show you like what you are building and why it is important for the society. And if you mm -hmm. can spin it in a fact that it's important for the US in a certain way, or that helps. So it's in biotech, it helps a lot because you can show you are gonna make some drugs, something like that. Uh, we have a team member, like who are our team, who is our investors, uh, sorry, not mm -hmm. investor, who is our, um, uh, what's about to say, uh, mentors or uh, mm -hmm. advi advisory team. So you need mm -hmm. to bring a few people who are kind of reputed in the field, who are advising your company. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people, but like one or two people. That is to start with. And the third thing, you need to make a case of your business, like what you want to sell at the end. 
what will happen mm -hmm. if everything is successful mm -hmm. and why it is of importance that you work on this so that's the business case, business uh, market opportunity or all this stuff uh, the law firms usually take care of all the incorporation so they have done it for you like multiple times and it usually take them like a week mm -hmm. to start to end and you give them all the document you give them their name company your name your ssn number all this stuff uh, they will fix it uh, they will do it mm -hmm. so it takes around 10 days to uh, incorporate the company and within 10 days you can parallelly you need a number called ein number it's like your ssn number for the company mm -hmm. you get the ein number after your incorporation that's for the tax purpose you use the EIN number to open up a bank account, a business bank account. Uh, you can go to any bank to with the, that EIN number and they will open up your bank account. Usually it takes two or three days. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's basically official incorporation done. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Arge, do we have any more slides or shall we continue yeah, with I question and answer sessions? One, I think okay. I have one more one more slide. And I think this is an important slide. If you ask me what are the lessons during the process, uh, irrespective of the company or not, I would say a few things. Uh, I, I think there is that we always think that uh, we have to keep up papers to bring value on our thing. Uh, but eventually we realize the data is kind of the most important stuff. You can think like uh, companies like uh, Facebook, NVIDIA, they don't care about their software. They have so much data that they can do a lot of stuff. So I would say uh, I really took care of my data, whichever I worked during all my time. I had all my data backed up where I can reuse a lot of those stuff, uh, which is important because once you're outside of academia, you don't have enough access. And if you don't have enough data, you cannot do anything, despite you are having some good ideas or something like that. So it, like, it's, it's very important that you back up all the data for future. Uh, also, it's important that you have to bring your own kind of research program besides your PI. Uh, and I'm not saying that it's uh, you, you will get funding or something like that, but it's important that you kind of have a situation where people know your name that you are also working in the field. You are not, not just a shadow of your post of PI. Uh, so that really helps uh, in bringing advisory people in your, in your board, if you want to do, or it, it will help you to connect with people who, are, who want to take you seriously, basically. Uh, or, or be critical, like a, be a voice in your scientific field that uh, have a massive impact. Uh, so, of course, that different fields has different momentum, and you more or less know how things are going. But you need to provide your critical opinion on everything. Uh, for example, uh, for, let's say, for example, someone published a paper in Nature, right? And we by default think that it's a Nature paper; it's a great thing. Uh, but that's not necessarily true, and that's in more cases this is not true. Uh, so you need to find like a critical thoughts on why this thing, what are the things, what are the interesting things on this specific paper or how the field will move forward from that. I think that is a sign of a good voice. Uh, like actively engage in social media because most of the investors and people who are in the intersection of business and biotech, they are all in social media. They really, uh, you need to tap into their uh, network. Uh, it's important to bring your own research collaboration. Uh, I can give one personal story on how it happened for me. Uh, we, Because we are computational people, we are looking for experimental collaboration uh, by the end, like, end of last year. And I wrote eight emails for, to different professors to find one very specific experiment we can do. And I thought no one will answer. And there is a professor in Boston, uh, he answered me out of one out of 80, that's the luck here. And from that, we 
today we managed to get so much data, so much stuff. That's like, it's, it feels like it's almost a different research agenda, which is outside of academia. So you need to try. I mean, I just give it an odd. I mean, every single person out of 80 did not, like most of them did not reply. So you just need to give it a shot. Um, I think uh, the universe kind of forces to help make things happen. And we often don't ask. And I think that's our fault. Like I often don't ask because what people will think is that good enough? Like I think if you need something, just ask. That's basically what I learned. Uh, I'm happy to elaborate any of the details here. Okay. Thank you, Arga. Thank you so much. Uh, audience, do you have any questions? Uh, people so, on the yes, go ahead. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. How soon or how far are you from raising your money now? <laughs> Uh, we have a bunch of chat with the investors. Uh, okay. So I will see how that goes. Uh, we are okay. trying to, I think raising money is a long term game. I don't yeah. have any. Yeah. I mean, the I initial one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think initial raising is the big problem. I think after, yeah. once you raise once, you will get a few rounds. Uh, yeah. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. And also, are you applying? Have you applied to any SBI, SB, those other? NH grants. Yeah, we are thinking of applying to this grant called ARPA. ARPA oh, yeah. is a yeah. it's a defense grant. Uh, we will try to apply for this SBIR grant to hopefully in November or in January. So we'll see okay. how that goes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Good luck. Thank you. On those same lines, Argya, uh, can you yes. uh, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the role of an incubator and how that incubator are you still taking help of that incubator and what someone can ask from an incubator uh, yeah up to what extent one can ask from an incubator something like this yeah so uh, well my incubator was based in california and they wanted me to physically move to california in order to join them mm -hmm. But I, th I thought that would be a huge risk because if the living cost of California is significant. I cannot just like live there with my own money. Uh, so, but in general, you can go for, in I think it's wise to go for incubators. For example, you can go for Y Combinator. Uh, there are a bunch of other incubators in biotech. Uh, the drawback is that they might uh, take a huge amount of equity from you. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, in my company currently, me and my co-founder has 60% of the company together. No, 70% of the company together. If the incubator comes in and they say they will spend, they will give us $100,000 and they will take 40% of the company. Wow. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. So that means I have to move back to 30% of that, right? Uh, so it depends uh, which incubator does that. So you need to know uh, how much they want to take. Mm -hmm. They want to give you something for sure. They will give you some money, but they will take something from the from your company. And if you're okay with that, I think you should definitely join incubator. It, it helps you to learn. I think it helps you to make a good network. Okay. Eventually you have to do your stuff, but it helps you to make your network of people who can help you to uh, connect with real talent or better investors or something like that. And apart from money, what support one gets from incubator? If you can tell someone, uh, a very naive person, this is coming from a very naive background. Uh, so if, yeah. apart from money, what support does an incubator provide? Uh, they have their, uh, most of the incubators have their own list of angel investor or venture capitalist who okay. like to work with uh, companies who worked within the specific incubator. So mm -hmm. your odd of getting raising money is high. And they often organize uh, grant proposal writing stuff for mm -hmm. SBIR, SGIR for free mm -hmm. uh, from taxpayers' money, uh, which you can help. That will help with, with uh, getting grants. If you want to hire a person to write grant, uh, some people get discounts uh, because you are working with a very specific incubator mm -hmm. who, who helps with that you might get a, uh, so for example, if you're starting a kind of experimental company, uh, 
and you are a part of the incubator, they will give you the bench space, uh, office, uh, everything else needed to do the stuff. Uh, so there is a bunch of help uh, incubator can provide, uh, uh, but it depends like ch which one you want to choose, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, I mean, I know for a fact that if you go to Y Combinator, if you are included in Y Combinator, you can always contact their alumni network, which is mm -hmm. huge. Mm -hmm. uh, but Y Combinator takes a big part of your company. Mm -hmm. And it, it does not guarantee that you will raise the money next round uh, because Y Combinator, the things like Y Combinator is kind of uh, not that, it was great a few years back, but now it's kind of becoming generic. Mm -hmm. uh, so it depends on, it, you have to play the balance, uh, which one you want to go for. Excellent. Okay, it's great to know. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, yes, I have one more question. So uh, yeah. you mentioned that you are a salaried in your own company. So what is, is your official status in your company? Uh, like you are a salaried employee as well as co-founder. Like it's an official status or you are only a salaried em employee? Uh, my official status is a CEO and a board member. Okay. Uh, co I, I, I think co-founder co is not official status. So my official status is CEO and a voting member of the board. Uh, mm -hmm. My other co-founder, his official status is president. president. Officially yeah. is the president of the company. Okay. So is there any specific reason for these uh, title or is it just like what you select, opted for? Uh, I mean, uh, the reason being uh, he is the president and I'm what I am is because he he mainly works in the technology part. I kind of work in the more of the holistic part of the company. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. possible. My main question was, is it possible to have two uh, different official position in your company? Like since you are on a yeah, yeah, visa, yeah. it's Absolutely. an employment-based yeah. visa. So you can have two different position in the same company, being it's your own company. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, I think board member, uh, I would not say like, uh, let me correct. I don't think board member is official position. Official position is the CEO. I have mm -hmm. a voting right in the board. If that oh, makes okay. that's okay. Yes, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's okay. Yeah. That's what I was asking. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's no other question, I want to ask a question and I want to take yes. Arya a little bit back in the past. Uh, and I, yes. just, uh, I want to like dig a little bit deeper and uh, i'm i'm yeah. kind of listening to you i kind of i'm assuming that the seed of being an entrepreneur was so like a long long time ago uh in your mind but uh, some of these movements in owen visa kind of pushed you to become an entrepreneur uh is that so or there was had you had that plan or vision or something in your mind well prepared uh, from and in your career, I, I, how did this develop in your mind? Yeah, I, I don't have any big answer on that, but I started a open source drug discovery kind of a venture when I was undergrad in mm -hmm. India. Okay. Uh, at one point, CSL also had that kind of scenario, but I thought CSL was very much like they don't want anyone else to be a part of them. Uh -huh. And that was their attitude all time. Okay. So I, I, I thought like, yeah, we should definitely do something outside of them. Uh, I was very young, like I was like 18 or 19 when I did that. Uh, uh, and then uh, I think that was the start, right? Uh, and during uh, 2023 or something, uh, a few of the things happened. For example, uh, I would say my postdoc supervisor got some funding mm -hmm. to start his own company. And then he left within a few months. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and then there were other people who are in the within the same space. They are trying to do something. Uh, and, and then I realized I, I actually worked with a bunch of companies, so I know what was the missing part basically. But I thought there would be something one should bring in <clears throat> within the field, and 
I always thought like you see these companies popping up and they raise a lot of money, they fire a lot of people, right? Uh, so and uh, like if you ask me like personally what inspired me to do that is that I knew a lot of talented people from my old companies and mm -hmm. they got fired. Uh, and I think that's not their fault. I think that's the fault of the leadership who did not know what to do. Uh, so this company is, has one of the aim that if we become, I mean, I, I'm not saying that we're going to be successful. Uh, I'm saying that if things move forward, uh, we have a aim to, I, I know which kind of, who, who are those kind of people to bring them a platform. Uh, and that will help a lot for development because uh, I think, so that's kind of a personal agenda for mm -hmm. me to start this. Yeah. Right. Any other questions from the audience? Uh, I, I have a bunch of questions. So I'm just taking time yeah, yeah, for go, people go to uh, ask the ask their questions. If not, uh, then I can keep on asking <laughs> probably. I think I have one more question for now. Yes, uh, go ahead. Samantha, for your company, the work you are doing currently, do you have, are, are these based on any patents of your own? Are these based on other research you have done or are you doing everything like from scratch? You know, uh, you, of course you have a lot of background and experience. So any thoughts on that initiative? Yeah, uh, so during my postdoc, I started, <clears throat> I did like initial groundwork uh, of, the, of the idea basically. Okay. Uh, so, and the biggest challenge was not to develop method. The biggest challenge was to get enough data. Mm. Uh, so last few months, we managed to get a computing platform mm. by external collaboration for free. Usually other companies, if you're a startup, you like pay, you waste a lot of money on that, but we got it for free basically. Okay. So we now can have a significant amount of data and that actually helped us uh, to train machine learning models. Mm -hmm. So I knew a person from my previous company who does a lot of machine learning training. Yeah. Uh, so I'm trying to bring him in as the external person to work with that. Okay. So, so I have like a data generation, machine learning software, and towards some kind of biological motion, uh, which we are yeah. trying to <clears throat> test. So that's the whole overview. Got it. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, have you involved or are you taking help from your postdoc boss also? From the no, he's part just a part of that. He's a part of advisory team. Oh, he's. Uh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Oh, uh, yeah. I had a question about the own yeah. visas that you had this multiple own yes. visas, and you mentioned. For the second one, uh, uh, you used a lot of same material, uh, which I mm -hmm. think uh, is also, again, very common for a lot of visas. Uh, did you yeah. use the same lawyer did, or did you change the lawyers? Did it help to make change the lawyers depending on your situation, like from like academy, uh, like industry sponsored OVAS to O1 visa to your own founded company's own visa? Did that make any difference? Yeah. So. Um, I would not say it did make any difference, but I would say the I uh, the way I connected the law firm, I was in social media, Twitter, mm -hmm. and I saw this specific law firm. They used to work with a lot of uh, founders from Bay Area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I knew they are, they, are, they are like people who I can trust. Right. So, I mean, they have some uh, background in it and they have some... Yeah, they know the game, the basically. Game. Yep. Great. Yeah, that that was so my the question. Yeah, how to identify? Yeah, yeah. So that because there are so many lawyers out there. Yeah, I can I can type the name. Uh, uh, I can type the name if you want. Uh, if you sure. Yeah, that, that would be great. That would be great. Because different law yeah. firms uh, operate in different domains of all these visas, and they have more specialities in that yeah i typed one <clears throat> yeah so uh, type the second so these are the two uh yeah okay 
if, if you go to the plymouthstreet.com, uh, you will see they have a lot of resources. If you just click on the link, they will go to, you will go to the place called resources. Mm -hmm. And they have a lot of resources on how to apply for O1, how to make your profile and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I know personally, they, they worked a lot with, here is the thing. I mean, you can work with Chen and everyone. And I'm not saying I, 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 I don't really care. But these people, they they keep a lot of documents open. And mm. they are pretty young and more of like a tech savvy people. So they are very fast. Okay. So uh, uh, I think that's a good alternative if someone wants to try them. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's an excellent yeah. resource to have handy. Yeah. Any other questions in there? Uh, let me check the chat on the Facebook if there's any question up there. Um, so for none. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to ask there if anybody has any question. So we still have some time. Um, what? Yeah. Before, uh, yeah, before we end or uh, anybody has questions while people are thinking, I want to um, uh, really thank you for uh, walking us through your career and this journey. Uh, it's not every day we get to hear or listen or uh, watch you know, this story. So thank you so much for your time uh, on behalf of Stan Pierce of and course. everybody. I'm, I'm really, really uh, thankful. Um, and sharing this meeting yeah, with thank, you details. thank you for inviting uh, for that yeah thank you for inviting absolutely uh well i have one question about your current uh, yeah. uh, company and i know it's 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 in the stealth mode and you may not be able to share more information uh but um where where do you think uh, uh like uh, what what's the outlook you're looking right now uh, are you coming out of stealth mode soon? Are you ready for? Uh, we, um, we'll be very happy to uh, host that again if you yeah when you're coming out of stealth yeah, mode. Yeah, for sure. We'll do it. Yeah, I think if we manage to get that, I will definitely update. Um, so currently we have we're in an active uh, chat with I would say six or seven investors. Um, mm -hmm. But the investing uh, game is difficult uh, because investor tech. Uh, you need to like proactively send them emails to reach a uh, set up meetings. And it's, there is no definite timeline if you, if you are in or not. Uh, right. So I'm always look out to meet people who are, who can help with the investment uh, and can connect with the investors. I think that's the stage. That's mainly the business side. And the second side, which we are trying to do is to uh, still keep on doing the science. Uh, so we still in active collaboration with uh, our uh, academic partner who are doing the experimental work. Uh, and we are trying to kind of uh, bring in one of the model of how protein-protein interacts, both from simulation and from experiment together, uh, which we think kind of unique in the field. And uh, that is our kind of a big agenda that we need to show can we bring something unifying? So for example, if you do a research on a very particular, let's say for example, people do research on GPCRs, mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty, <clears throat> you usually take one protein as a, like a truth, and you maybe do some kind of drug discovery on that. Uh, but what we want to do, let's say for example, I have 10 different GPCRs. Now I give you a new sequence of a GPCR, which have no data. Can you predict me something which is not, there. So it may be a new sequence come in, which may be a signaling pathway for a cancer, but I don't have a structure. I don't know which state to choose. I, I don't know which drug to bind. Mm -hmm. How should I start? So we wanted to address that question. <clears throat> uh, hopefully something uh, more generalizable. So okay. we'll see how that goes. So if if I'm if I understand correctly and please correct me I'm wrong uh, because yeah. I'm not in from this background so yeah. you will use uh, already existing data and uh, use that as a let's say a mirror to for this new sequence and try to identify the similarities maybe in the drug target binding profile 
etc right is that Did yeah I, yeah more or less the same and, less yeah you were right, right? Uh, so we had like a starting data points like protein data bank let's mm -hmm. say for example uh but we have a lot of training data which gets a lot of dynamical information of the protein which mm -hmm. is our proprietary data okay uh, so then you have instead of a one structure you get like a time series of how it moves and you can get it for each individual proteins mm -hmm. and uh, then what you can you can train a machine learning model to figure out interesting features from that uh, the next big step which you want to do uh, within that feature you can test experiment to see if these features are ex important for drug discovery so that's what we are trying to do for now okay but our next big goal is that it, to train a newer machine learning model which you call a diffusion mo model so if you can think of like this image generator from ai that's the diffusion model mm -hmm. so instead of giving image you can give all the data which you gathered right. with this model and say give me something new from a new sequence can you predict something new here uh, so as you can see the important part is to gather a lot of meaningful data uh, which is which takes a lot of time basically yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, do some experiment because if you if you gather data and the experiments does not match that's kind of a wrong data set right excellent um, so yeah all right um, thank you thank you so much Arge, again uh, i'm just going to check yeah, one last minute uh, if anybody has any last questions we have a couple of minutes left if not we can uh, wrap up this session and uh, use the last bit of sun that's out here <laughs> before the labor day i'll ask one more question uh, so uh, yeah. being a self funded founder uh, do you have to show a minimum amount of salary which you need to pay yourself according to state law? Uh, no, uh, because I said that there was three out of eight criteria for O1. Mm -hmm. And you see salary is one of the criteria, not all of them. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, in the next round, I did not choose salary as my criteria. I choose okay. scholarly work okay. contribution. So uh, my salary is, I mean, I need to even pay like a minimum salary, minimum wage to... Mm -hmm. So I think that helps a lot because you are, if you are in, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to miss code. If you're in a different visa category, you need to show a typical salary range. Mm -hmm. But there are eight choices here, right? So mm -hmm. I, I did not choose salary choice. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Arge, again. Um, thank you. Uh, we really appreciate your uh, session and Thanks your a lot. information. Great to have you. Good. Thank you. Uh, enjoy, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Take care, Mike. Thanks. Thank you.